In this lecture, we're going to continue talking about the Laplace transform, and specifically we're going to talk about taking the derivative of a Laplace transform. So let's think about taking the derivative of a Laplace transform. The first derivative with respect to s of big F of s, so that's the Laplace transform of f, is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to s of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t with respect to t. So that's if we replace the Laplace transform with the formal definition of the Laplace transform. Now, integration and differentiation, the order in which those operations are conducted doesn't matter. We can flip those. And so this will be the integral from 0 to infinity of the first derivative with respect to s of e to the negative st times f of t with respect to t. If we take that derivative with respect to s, we'll get the integral from 0 to infinity of negative t e to the negative st times f of t with respect to t. We'll regroup that a little bit, so we'll pull the negative sign outside. So this will be negative integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times t times f of t dt. And this, by definition, is going to be negative Laplace transform of t times f of t. Now, we could do the same approach for any derivative, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth derivative, and we'll come up with a similar result, except the power on the t will increase based on which derivative we're taking. So this leads us to the theorem if big F of S is the Laplace transform of F of T, and N is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, then the Laplace transform of T to the nth power times F of T will equal negative 1 to the N times the nth derivative with respect to S of big F of S. So this gives us a way to deal with the Laplace transform of a product of T to a power times another function. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples. We want to take the Laplace transform of t cubed times e to the t. Now, this is a product of t to a power times an exponential. And since we have a product with an exponential, we could evaluate this Laplace transform using a translation theorem, which we've talked about in the past. But using today's theorem, this is the Laplace transform of t cubed e to the t. So we have t to the third power. So we're going to use today's theorem with an n of 3. So we can rewrite this. This is going to be negative 1 to the third power times the third derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of e to the t. Now we can take the Laplace transform of e to the t. So this is going to be negative 1 times the third derivative with respect to s of 1 over s minus 1. Now we just need to evaluate that third derivative. So big F is s minus 1 to the negative first power. We can take the derivative of this, so we bring our negative 1 down to the front. That gives us negative s minus 1 to the negative 2 power. The second derivative will bring negative 2 down to the front, so that's positive 2 times s minus 1 to the negative 3 power. And for the third derivative, we'll bring the negative 3 down, so that'll give us negative 6 times s minus 1 to the negative 4 power. So we can take this third derivative and we can plug it into our formula. This will be negative 1 times negative 6 over s minus 1 to the fourth. And if we simplify that, those two negatives will become positive. So this will be 6 over s minus 1 to the fourth. And we get that same result if we had used that translation theorem. So this gives us a little bit of flexibility in the way that we solve a problem like this because we could solve it in mul multiple, multiple ways. All right, let's look at a second example. So this time we have the Laplace transform of t squared times the cosine of t. Now for this one, we don't have the option of using the translation theorem, so we have to use the theorem today dealing with the derivative of a transform. So we have t squared, our n value will be 2. So this is negative 1 squared times the second derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of the cosine of t. 
So negative 1 squared is a positive 1, so that'll just kind of go away. We have the second derivative with respect to s, and the Laplace transform of the cosine of t is s over s squared plus 1. So we want to take this second derivative. So we need to evaluate this second derivative. So our function, big F of s, is s over s squared plus 1. If we take the first derivative using the quotient rule, we'll get 1 minus s squared divided by s squared plus 1 quantity squared. And if we take the second derivative, again using the quotient rule, we'll get negative 2s times s squared plus 1 squared minus 1 minus s squared times 4s times s squared plus 1 all over s squared plus 1 to the fourth. Now we can simplify this. This becomes negative 2s times s squared plus 1 minus 1 minus s squared times 4s over s squared plus 1 cubed. So we canceled an s squared plus 1 out of all of the terms. So we distribute. That's going to give us negative 2s cubed minus 2s minus 4s plus 4s cubed all over s plus 1 cubed, s squared plus 1 quantity cubed, excuse me. All right, and so we can simplify this. Negative 2s cubed plus 4s cubed will give us a 2s cubed. Negative 2s minus 4s gives us a negative 6s. So we get 2s cubed minus 6s over s squared plus 1 quantity cubed. Now we could factor a 2s out of that numerator to get 2s times s squared minus 3 over s squared plus 1 cubed. And so that would be the Laplace transform we're looking for. One of the kind of results of this theorem is that uh, somebody a long time ago has created a table of Laplace transforms. So they've taken a lot of different forms of t times a function or t squared times a function or t cubed times a function and they've created a table. So if you have access to a table like this, you could use that to solve problems as well. Uh, I teach my class from the uh, Zill book, and in our book, the table of Laplace transforms comes from the back cover. And so you, know, you can look at the back cover of the book or uh, appendix in the book, perhaps. Your book should have a table of Laplace transforms. And so you could use those uh, to evaluate problems such as this. So for our next example, we want to do y prime minus y equals t times e to the t times the sine of t with an initial condition y of 0 equals 0. So to start with, we'll take the Laplace transform of everything. So the Laplace transform of y prime minus the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of t times e to the t times the sine of t. That e to the t function there, e to the t is going to give us translation, so we can apply the first translation theorem, of translation in s. So this will be the Laplace transform of y prime minus the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of t times the sine of t translated from s to s minus 1. All right, we can take our Laplace transforms. y prime will give us s squared y of s minus y of 0. And the Laplace transform of y will give us big Y of s. On the right-hand side, t times the sine of t, we could use the theorem that we've been dealing with today. So we could use that theorem to figure this out. Or if we're looking at the table of Laplace transforms from the appendix in our book, so our book has a formula number 22 that says the Laplace transform of t times the sine of kt equals 2ks over s squared plus k squared quantity squared. So this form matches what we're dealing with if our k value is equal to 1. So we can take the Laplace transform of t sine of t using this formula and plugging 1 in for k. So that's going to give us 2s over s squared plus 1 squared quantity squared. And we're going to translate that from s to s minus 1. All right. <clears throat> so our initial condition, y of 0 equals 0, means that this middle term here is going to cancel out. It'll go away. We can factor big Y of s out of the other two terms. So that's going to give us s minus 1 times big Y of s equals 2 times s minus 1 divided by s minus 1 squared plus 1 quantity squared. 
We'll divide both sides by s minus 1 to get big big y of s by itself. So that will give us big Y of s equals 2 divided by s minus 1 squared plus 1 squared quantity squared. Now that we have big Y by itself, we'll take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides to find our solution. So the inverse Laplace transform of big Y of s is going to equal the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s minus 1 squared plus 1 squared quantity squared. Since we see the s minus 1 within our inverse Laplace transform, that's going to tell us, give us a hint that we want to use translation. So we could think of this as s being translated to s minus 1. And by the first translation theorem, that's going to give us an exponential in t. So the inverse Laplace transform of big Y of s will equal e to the t times the inverse Laplace of 2 over s squared plus 1 squared quantity squared. We're going to look at our formula sheet to figure out how to take this inverse Laplace transform. So the formula sheet from the appendix in our book, we're going to look at formula number 25 with a k value of 1. Now formula 25 says that the inverse Laplace transform of 2k cubed divided by s squared plus k squared quantity squared is equal to the sine of kt minus kt times the cosine of kt. So we're going to apply that with k equal to 1, and that's going to give us y of t equals e to the t times the sine of t minus t times the cosine of t. And that'll be the solution to our differential equation.